Hope you have your Bible, and we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 11. I will get those songs back after the, the service, and we'll keep them for, for next time. Uh, while you're turning there, I'll just mention a couple of, of announcements. Um, we're going to try uh, putting out pamphlets every Saturday this next this coming month. Now, obviously, you wouldn't have to do it at the same, we wouldn't all have to do it at the same time, and if there's a more convenient time you'd rather do it, you know, midnight till two on Thursday morning or something, don't do it then, but uh, you know, I'm happy to give you an area and just let you do it whenever you want, but I'll, I'll be here every Saturday morning, May, starting at nine, and we'll, we'll go out and, in an hour, you can usually put out 100 or 200 pamphlets, so we, we can get quite a few out in, in a fairly short time. So we'll start that, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. Uh, there's no youth group this Friday. The, that'll be the first Friday of, the, of, the, of May. Uh, the Ladies Fellowship, I, I don't think we're going to have anybody go, really. Uh, is Dell still going? Okay. If, if you're interested in going to that, let us, let us know. Um, and as well, I had a person call me today about uh, blankets and clothing for homeless people. And I thought, yeah, we can do that. You know, if, if you've got uh, blankets or clothing that uh, you don't want, um, make sure it's neat. Uh, bring it to church in a plastic bag, and we'll, we'll make sure that, that they get that. Uh, the, uh, one of the reasons I was interested in, in that particularly is because he called today, and the lesson tonight is on generosity. <laughs> and I, that's a good thing. <laughs> we'll do that. Um, so Proverbs chapter 11 we, uh, we'd gotten about halfway through last week, and I, I decided to uh, finish it this week. It's uh, really the theme, I feel like, is God's call to character. You know, as Christian, God, God calls us to character. Uh, there's those who try and preach the theme that, oh, you know, God's grace, we can just live however we want. But really, the idea is to be like Jesus. It's not to be like we want, it's to be like Him. And God's call is, is to character. Uh, he, he calls us to, uh, for instance, in, in verse 1, honesty. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. Uh, he calls us to humility, in verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Uh, he calls us to integrity, uses that word in verse 3. Uh, just a lot of character issues. Uh, in our, char in our, our character in relation to other people. Our character in our own spirit. Uh, verse 16, he talks about being gracious and strong. Verse 17, he talks about being merciful. Uh, you know, we need to have the qualities that God values, and we need to uh, work at that. And when we don't, we need to ask forgiveness and, and ask the Lord to re replace that. Uh, and, and there's consequences to our character. There's consequences in our relationships. Uh, verse 31 of the, of the chapter, chapter 11, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. There's consequences to how we live. And God calls us to, to character. Well, we're in verse 24 tonight, and he's t he talks here about, really, generosity. Let me read verses 24 to 26. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. He's just talking here about generosity, not being stingy, not being greedy, not being a miser. You know, it's easy to, to be that way. And really, I think the key to, to this whole idea of, of generosity is put the Lord first. You know, when you, when you see how generous the Lord is with us, it helps you to be that same way with other people. And one of the things that comes up in Proverbs 3, verse 9, and, and many places, uh, he says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Uh, I believe as Christians we should tithe. You know, we should uh, honor the Lord. That's, that's what a tithe is. It's, it's recognizing God's ownership. And we don't do it in a legalistic way. Where uh, I used to have a friend. He, he tithed to the penny. You know, $16.48 or <laughs> whatever. Uh, if you want to do it that way, that, that's all right. But it's just putting the Lord first, recognizing that everything we have comes from Him. And then there in, in verse 24 of chapter 11, 
one of the principles of life is that the way you get things to grow is you sow the seed. You, you can't get a crop by holding on to the seed. Increase comes from sowing. Uh, there is that scattereth and yet increaseth. You know, when the farmer puts the seed out, oh no, I lost it. <laughs> no, he's investing. And that's going to come forth hundredfold or whatever. And it's the same in life. You know, we need to be careful that we're not grasping too hard on the things that we can't hold on to anyway. What was the saying that the, the missionary said? He's no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Now, there's so much in life we can't keep, uh, we might as well invest it. Uh, give and it shall be given unto you, the Bible says in Luke chapter 6. And as well, at the end of that verse, you can, I think you can get out of that that don't hold back just because of fear. Um, there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. You know, a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid with their finances, and they're afraid of, uh, of what's going to happen. Uh, we need to be trusting the Lord. Now, we use common sense, and uh, we use wisdom, God's wisdom, uh, but we don't want to operate by fear. And um, later on in Proverbs, he says, He coveteth greedily all the day long, but, to, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. You know, when we're covetous and we don't, we're not generous, it's not going to bless us. It's not going to benefit. And it's going to have a, a bad consequence. A, a good example of this, a good example of a bad example, is the man Nabal. You remember Nabal in, uh, in Samuel, 1 Samuel 25? David and his men had been basically living just off of his property. And not only did they not rob him, they protected him. And uh, that's, that's what the servants of Nabal said. Um, let me see where I am here. 1 Samuel 25, verse 16. They were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. That's what the servants said about David and his men. And when David sent one of his men to ask Nabal, I guess for some food, you know, for, for some help, and Nabal's response was very ungenerous. <laughs> he said, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I've killed from my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? He knew who David was. He knew what they'd been doing. But he was, he was a miser. And David's response was, well, we'll just go kill him. <laughs> Probably not the right response. Uh, and as he got near, or you know the story, Nabal's wife talked him out of it, basically. And with some very wise words, uh, she said this to him, The soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. That's uh, 1 Samuel 25, 29. And the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. And she was just reminding David, you're bound up with the Lord. Others, the Lord's going to sling them out, but you want to do the thing that, the, that is right. You need to think about the future. and Think about you know, what's going to happen. Uh, very good advice. Uh, we need to be careful that we're not stingy, that we're not misers like, like Nabal was. And the, the key to it is to fear the Lord. There's a lot of verses in Proverbs that use that expression. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. And one of the things that godly character includes is, I don't know if this is a proper phrase or not, but financial kindness. <laughs> In uh, Proverbs 31, verse 20, when he talks about the godly woman, one of the things that she does, Proverbs 31, verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. That's the, that's the godly woman. She has a concern for uh, for others. I remember, and I don't remember how I saw this or how I was aware of this, but I remember when I was a young teen, my dad was the principal of a Christian school, and uh, we weren't at all well off. We were, we were poor. I remember one, one year at church, they had uh, food baskets for the poor people, and when my sister and dad got done helping load them, they gave him one. And he said, my sister was real quiet all the way home, and said, Dad, are we poor? <laughs> I guess so, huh? <laughs> anyway, um, somehow I knew that 
when one of the teacher's wives had a baby, my dad gave him $100. That really impressed me. That, that was a lot of money in those days. I mean, that was, you know, stagecoaches and wagons back then, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and it, it stuck in my mind that here, though we didn't have much, God, my dad saw fit to help someone who had less. And that was a blessing to me. That was something that, that stuck in, in my mind. Godly character includes financial kindness. There's a really strange way that God puts it. Look in Proverbs 19, verse 17. He says that helping people like that is lending to the Lord. Proverbs 19, verse 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. I've circled the he. I, th I think that's the Lord. <laughs> you know, it's not the poor person. You're lending to the Lord. That's a pretty good investment. You know, if we help people, uh, it's lending to the Lord. It says it similarly in Proverbs 28, verse 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. You know, we see a need, we can meet the need, but we, we pretend like we don't know or couldn't help. Uh, we want to be liberal people. Um, let, let me read you a couple of sections I won't comment on them so much, but uh, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6. There, there's several portions in the New Testament that teach this same thing and give us some real details. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Um, in my Bible, I've, I've made a note here, uh, grudgingly is out of sorrow, and out of necessity is when you have to. You, know, you pay a bill, you don't give cheerfully, do you? You give because you have to. He says, that's not the way to give. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So a good passage on, on generosity and having a heart that's, that's not... Uh, greedy. The, the other one is Philippians chapter 4, and starting in verse 10. I'll read a, a fair section here. Philippians chapter 4, verse 10. Paul talks not only about his own attitude towards money, but uh, what a blessing the church at Philippi was to him in their, their giving. Philippians 4, verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We don't always think of that verse as a verse that has to do with our finances and our, our physical financial situation, but it's exactly it. Notwithstanding, Ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. So they were helping him financially. It's interesting that word communicated, it's the word koinonia. It has to do with fellowship. It's part of our Christian fellowship. Verse 16, For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Again, there's a, a great verse, isn't it, that we often think of. And he's talking about generosity. You know, they'd been generous. He says, well, You've been lending to the Lord, more or less. 
You know, God will, will bless you and, and help you. And that's the key. Uh, we can be generous because our, our trust is in the Lord. And that's what he's talking about there in, in Proverbs chapter 11. On the negative side, you know, there's things we can see in the chapter that we, uh, if we take the positive truth, there's things that we need to avoid. We, we don't want to be dishonest. Uh, we don't want to be proud or greedy or uh, hypocritical or foolish. Uh, we don't want to be unkind or stingy. Uh, one commentator I was reading today, he said basically, don't feed the miser inside of you. <laughs> we all have a miser in there <laughs> that'll say, nah, don't be generous. Um, don't feed that, that little guy. Uh, do the generous thing. Do the godly thing. And in, in Proverbs 11, then, he, he summarizes it in the last few verses. Uh, Proverbs 11:27. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. But he that seeketh mischief, it shall come unto him. Now look for God's good. You know, in life, there's always a good way and a bad way to, to approach something. Don't look for the mischief. Look for God's, God's good. Uh, really, uh, generosity comes from contentment. You know, if, if you're greedy and always looking for more, you're not going to be generous. In fact, you're going to be the opposite. You're probably going to take things from others to increase your, your bit. Uh, Proverbs 23, verses 4 and 5. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. You know, our wisdom says, yeah, rich, that's the answer. <laughs> Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Ever experienced that? <laughs> yeah. Somebody said, if money talks, all it ever says to me is goodbye. You know? um, riches aren't the answer. Look for God's good. In, in verse 28 of 11, he says, He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flurry as a branch. Don't trust riches. Now, that's not what our trust is in. It's in the Lord. And then in verse 29, work on relationships. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant uh, to the wise of heart. We need to be careful in, in our relationships. Uh, sometimes you won't understand why God has put someone in your life. Uh, it's, it's for your benefit and their benefit. You know, there's, there's some good that can come of it. And uh, you can be a blessing. Romans 12, 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. <laughs> you know, work at those relationships. And then the last two verses that we've been looking at quite a bit. Now, life has consequences. You know, if, if we're not generous, if we're misers, that's what we're going to reap. Reap, sow, yeah, sow and reap. I thought I had it backwards there. You know, if, if you sow generosity, that's what you'll reap. If you sow stinginess, that's, that's what you'll reap. Verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. There's recompense, there's consequence. And, and really the, the question we need to ask ourselves is which way are we headed? Are we headed to life or are we headed to death? I think verse 19 is the key verse to the chapter. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. And in this particular thing we're looking at tonight, uh, generosity, you know, we, we always appreciate it when somebody's generous with us. I was reading a little article about sharing. Have you ever had a little kid and they are real keen for someone else to share with them? Johnny's got a toy. He should share. But that's not sharing, is it? Sharing is when we say, this is mine, I'll share with you. Sharing is not, not when we say, that's yours, you should share with me. <laughs> we need to have an attitude that heads toward life. We need to have a, an attitude that's, that's like the Lord, where he saw our need and and he reached out to, to meet our need. And uh, I, I just thought it was interesting that the fellow called about clothing for the homeless. Uh, you know, uh, there's things in my closet I'd love to get rid of. And, uh, you know, they said any size, children, adults, uh, whatever, blankets, beanies, scarves. You know how cold it gets in Brisbane. <laughs> well, I guess if you don't have a house, it could be pretty cold. So anyway, if you're able to participate in that, that'll be a blessing. Uh, God will bring people into your life. Uh, and give you an opportunity to be a blessing. Start by putting the Lord first, 
and then just continue on from there. Any comments or questions before we have a time of prayer? Hmm. 